G'day folks, this is Ray. Welcome to another hopefully beneficial video about expat life in Thailand. This video is a kind of follow-up to my last video with Ian where we discussed the financial considerations of moving to Thailand. In this video, I want to give you a heads up about things that are not cheap in Thailand that few people consider. I love that Thailand is among the world's most affordable countries to travel and live in, and it certainly allows me to live comfortably on much less than I did back home in Australia. But all things are not cheap in Thailand, although many people, like myself, were and are led to believe this. Before we continue, if you're in Chiang Rai and finding it difficult to open a bank account and get your visa sorted, Jen can help. For a small fee, Jen will help you open your bank account and gather all the documents that you will need to submit your visa application. When that is done, you have two choices. You can go to the immigration office and file the application yourself, or two, you can pay someone to respond to represent you at the immigration office. If this is your choice, Jen will introduce you to a trusted associate who will take you to the immigration office and speak on your behalf. Also, Jen can help you if you want to learn basic conversational Thai or if you simply need an English-speaking driver you can trust. Jen's contact details are in the video description. Now, let's get on with the topic. Saying everything in Thailand is cheap is both inaccurate and deceptive. Cheap rent? Yep. Inexpensive food? You got it. Affordable medical care? You betcha. There are tons of budget-friendly aspects about Thailand which, make, which makes it a popular place to travel to and live in as well as a hot topic for people to write home about. Although these three components to basic healthy living can be very affordable in Thailand, there are far more to life's expenses than when you sleep, where you sleep, what you consume on a daily basis, and how you care for your body. This is what many of Thailand's visitors who, who blog or vlog fail to mention, and why sharing such an incomplete snapshot of their monthly expenses irks the heck out of me. Time and again, I come across blog posts, videos, or online articles through popular traveling websites where the author talks about living in Thailand for just a few hundred dollars a month. What a bloody joke! In fact, I recently stumbled across an article like this and it had me shaking my head. It's actually what inspired me to make this video. They say things like rent is two fifty US dollars per month and food is about six dollars a, a, a US dollars a day. See, they say, you can live in Thailand for $400 a month. They failed to mention a few things like the electricity bill. What about laundry? Whether you do it at a coin machine or drop it off at the cleaners. Bottled water, adult beverages and entertainment. They also failed to mention the cost of growing up responsibilities such as visa expenses or the cost of a new motorbike tire or helmet. Anyway, too many people believe that Thailand is dirt cheap across the board when it's not. I can't stress enough that not everything is cheap in Thailand. So let's have a peek at Thailand's more expensive side. TVs and computers are expensive and don't even get me started on batteries or memory cards. As far as smaller single voltage electronics go, I've had success finding cheaper versions of the markets or small mom and pop stores. I recently purchased an electric razor at Robinson's for nearly 1500 baht or about 43 uh, US dollars. Months later, I found a better, cheaper model at the bottom floor of a big C for less than 500 baht, which was, well, what's that, about 14 US dollars. Even so, I've purchased electric razors for less than 20 US dollars back in Oz, so it wasn't much of a bargain. Cars are expensive in Thailand, and it doesn't help that all the popular models are imported. The cost of a new basic model Honda Civic is 964,000 baht, or about 26,700 US dollars, 
while the median income of a Thai citizen with a bachelor's degree is 804,950 baht or about 25,554 uh, US dollars a year. Unfortunately, for those who do not have a bachelor's degree, the average yearly uh, Thai salary is 267,750 baht or about 8,500 US dollars. It's easy to see why motorbikes are a popular alternative to cars. Renting a car in Thailand is about five to ten times more expensive than renting a motorbike. On a short-term contract, you can usually get a 12cc bike for, uh, uh, sorry, a 125cc bike for 150 to 200 baht per day. Cars rent for a thousand baht and up per day. After signing a lease many years ago on a partially furnished house, I had assumed that if my rent was a quarter of what I was paying back in Australia, surely the furniture would be around that same 25% price point. Wrong. About a dozen stores later, I found a couch for 21,000 baht, say about 600 US dollars, and bar stools for 3,000 baht, or about 86 US dollars each. The local beer and liquor are especially cheap, and many admit to drinking them on a typical night out. The few local beer brands, Chang, Singer and Leo, are generally similar. They are all pale light, uh, light pale lagers, and the local rum is pretty rough going down, they tell me. If you want something more upscale, be prepared to pay through your nose. Imported liquor, wine and beer are actually just as pricey as back home, if not a little more, because of import taxes. After a while, it's difficult to justify spending only 75 baht on a Thai dinner and then turn around and drop 450 baht on three weekly poured cocktails. It's better to just buy a bottle set of local Sang Som rum and soda water and mix it yourself for 400 baht. Or go to a, go for a 100 baht bottle of Leo instead of a 200 baht uh, for for a pint of Guinness. Shampoo, body wash, deodorant, lotion, bug spray, dish soap, bathroom cleaner, keeping yourself and your house clean and smelling good, costs about the same as it did back home. The generic or Thai brands are more affordable, and there are selections of cheaper products. But again, it's not as if a bottle of laundry, laundry detergent or face lotion costs 20% of what it did back home. When I first moved to Thailand, I was happy to see that the major cities served Western food. At first, I didn't mind spending 500 baht on a pizza or 280 baht on a burger and fries, because for once, it was cheaper here in Thailand. But when I got over the novelty and compared it to the price of Thai food, and realized I was paying five or six times more for a plate of mediocre spaghetti, it made me think twice about how much I was spending. And as for groceries, I am thrilled to find Western grocery stores in Chiang Rai with access to foods like hummus, beef stock, tortillas and Greek yogurt. However, the price difference in groceries between what I spend at a local market, around 300, and 300 baht three times a week, and what I spend on a twice a month trip to my favorite international grocery store, 4,000 baht, is quite a bit. If you're big busted or bellied, long legged or have larger than average feet, you'll pay much higher for quality clothing and shoes that fit you. That's because, at least from my experience, most of the larger sizes are imported brands found at the modern malls. Some of the extra large sizes don't even exist in Thai clothes. Shorter, slimmer people will have luck finding cheap clothes in Thai markets for 150 to 400 baht, but it gets old when the hems start unraveling or buttons pop off after a few washes. You get what you pay for, and that's just the case with good quality western sized clothes. So get ready to dish out a thousand plus baht for a new pair of pants or a new dress or a nice shirt. Visa services applications and visa maintenance such as extensions or expenses related to border runs are all necessary evils and the price of them adds up. It's easy to overlook these expenditures because it only rears its ugly head once every few months or if you're lucky once a year. 
but it can't be ignored as part of your budget. I could go on about other things like some traveling expenses, kitchen appliances, or tuition at international schools, but I think you get the point. On the flip side, not everyone who lives in Thailand has to, or wants to, live cheaply. There's still a market for people who are willing to pay more, so it shouldn't come as a surprise to learn that all things are not cheap in Thailand. Realistically, a portion of your monthly expenses will go to expensive items, some of which are either sudden necessities or emergencies. Don't feed into this live like a king for $500 per month hogwash that continues to circulate the web. In my opinion, unless you're a party animal, the least you can live on is $1,500 US dollars per month. At the end of the day, it all depends on your lifestyle. I'm a non-drinker, and it costs me, on average, close to $2,000 US dollars per month. Okay, folks, that's it for this time. I am interested to hear your experiences and opinions, so pop those in the comments, and be sure to give us a like and subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, share this one, take care, and bye for now.